Hello, welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. Um, I don't need to tell you where I am, do I? Um, I'm, uh, I'm in Avebury. It is the, the winter solstice. Um, the actual moment of solstice is something like 9.57 or something tonight. So we're uh, on the brink of the longest night. So uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the important transition, I think, from this sunset to tomorrow's sunrise. So the um, plan for tonight is uh, we'll sit here and enjoy the um, the sunrise, uh, so <laughs> sunset first. Uh, got a uh, takeaway beer from the uh, ever wonderful Red Lion, the world's only pub inside a stone circle, um, and then find somewhere uh, to spend the night, so to speak, and come back again for the um, the sunrise tomorrow morning. So hopefully a wild camp somewhere in the Avebury vicinity tonight, uh, and then um, back again for the sunrise tomorrow morning, which may just end up being kind of grey and uneventful, but I'm so happy that we actually have some blue sky now because the weather forecast was really looking pretty unpromising. Uh, and the, uh, yeah, the trains has always conspired against me, but uh, here I am, uh, the sky is blue and you can see the sun. I'm pretty happy about that. The sun, not in any way a, uh, oh, terrible camera work. Um, not in any way a guaranteed commodity at the uh, solstice at Avebury. I've definitely been to a couple here where I've just seen nothing but gray skies. So that is an absolute delight. six minutes until the moment of sunset. Unfortunately looking across the road here, which um, sort of dents the activism a bit. Um, the, the drone of cars going by. Let's show you a bit more um, Avery. A decent turnout today. Well, I, uh, I think the moment of sunset has passed. I think, although if there's going to be a ceremony, it doesn't seem to have uh, started yet but uh, I'm just taking a, a brief break to pop back to the uh, red line for a couple more pints. Um, I've been reading about axial tilt and I've slightly melted my brain with uh, the understanding that I always assumed the earliest sunset of the year was on the winter solstice but it turns out it's more complicated than that and it's partly to do with the fact that a solar day is not exactly 24 hours and in fact the winter solstice I think currently coincides with a time when the solar day is at its longest the time between when the sun is directly overhead one day and directly overhead the next day is 24 hours plus or minus 20 seconds and currently I think we're more into a 24 hours plus 20 seconds bit of a year Well, uh, <laughs> slight slip there. I'm uh, now heading out of Avebury. Uh, spent a bit of time in. Um, oh, oh, it's terribly bright. Very difficult to walk along and talk into uh, talk into the camera when it's so uh, blindingly bright like that. So I hope you don't mind the uh, the background voiceover. Uh, um, I spent a bit of time at the Red Lion with uh, my friend who did not want to appear on camera under any circumstances. And he's gone off to his B&B and I'm now uh, heading to find a spot to uh, spend the evening. And then we'll rendezvous back again at uh, the Stone Circle in Avebury for sunrise. What I'm hoping to do this evening is to rediscover the wonderful hedge that I slept in for the um, autumn equinox, if I can find it again. Well, it looks a bit different because of the time of year, but I think I have found the spot. There was that rock, uh, and I just about remember that tree over there, and I think that was the tree before where I hung up the tarp. Um, it's not quite as secluded as it previously was, 
because, uh, well, I guess it's winter now. Um, ugh, horrible. I know you all hate the uh, ridiculous tent, but uh, I just wanted to keep things easy today. And, you know, as I said before, this theoretically takes two minutes to set up. Of course, it won't for me now in the dark, but um, you know, in theory, it's a lot less faffing about than tarps and baby bags. Let me introduce you to uh, Home for the Night, the, uh, the stupid tiny tent that I don't think anyone is a fan of, but uh, it is easy. I, mean, I still probably spent 15 minutes faffing about setting that up when it's supposed to only be two, but it's dark. I don't have a head torch and, um, you know, that will keep me warm and dry for the night. Well, I'm um, back in this hedge of which I'm so fond, which is great. Managed to find it again, although it does look a bit different, as I said, given the time of year. The tent is up. Um, I have with me some, <laughs> you can't see that, can you? Gevrey Chambertin from um, Maison Roche de Belen. Not to be confused with, uh, was it Maison Belen when I was um, in uh, Ivinho Beacon, uh, Beacon uh, region um, a little while back. So, uh, probably the first order of duty open that up having a bit of a hard time finding anything because I um, don't have a head torch right no wax to deal with this time which is, which is a plus it's a bit fiddly when you're um in this kind of bear grill scenario okay there it goes in there Let's not mess about. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, clean enough. Cheers. Happy solstice, everyone. Mmm, nice and fresh. Good hit of cherries. Stays fresh on the palate. A little bit dry and tannic towards the end. But that is good, nice. I like the temperature of it. Tonight's dinner, mushroom risotto. In fact, I think this is actually dried porcini. Porcini risotto, that is tonight's dinner. The first step of this is going to be to rehydrate the porcini a bit. Empty those guys into the billy. It's about 30 grams of um, porcini, not them measuring this. Oh wow, if only you could smell that. It smells like the floor of the woods, which coincidentally is sort of where I'm sitting. Well, some water needs to go into there just to cover them, because um, I'm going to have to decant this later. Do you want to see that? Um, using the BCB Fire Dragon fuel again, because it's just a bit more um, inconspicuous I guess than uh, having a great big fire okay so sorry terrible can work lid on that and we can um, rehydrate those porcini okay first BCB block has gone out Let's see what shape those um, porcini are in um, well, there's steam and stuff. They're going to get cooked again in with the uh, the rice, so that looks like a, a reasonable start. I've got one of those collapsible cups, mainly because it's sort of lightweight. Here is the plan. Um, find a relatively flat piece of ground and then decant the contents of the porcini into there. Because I want to keep the stock. Mm. Oh, well, it's a bit more... Um... <laughs> Slightly misunderestimated the quantities involved. I did just about fit in a uh, bit of running over the top of it, right next to the um, the toe of my boots there. How lovely! Um, so um, yeah, I mean they can sit there for a bit. They will keep on uh, rehydrating. Meanwhile, I'm going to get on with cooking the rice. Okay, so there's some butter in there. Do this while I'm. Uh, Terrible work time. And go some rice. Okay, 
Um, I mean, there really ought to be chopped shallots in there. Um, you know, you should start with a sort of risotto bianco base, but um, I think nobody got time for that. Check it's not burning on the bottom too badly. Put some water in there. Or um, a bit of wine, perhaps. <laughs> I feel like every time I do some, uh, every time I do some cooking in in a hedge in the bushes. I'm offending some nation's cuisine, and tonight um, it's the turn of um, Italy to be offended with this um, absolute abomination of, uh, of a risotto. But, uh, you know, um, I'm in a Bear Grylls type scenario here. I'm pretty sure Bear Grylls doesn't um, chop shallots when he's making a porcini risotto out in the wild. Perhaps we can gradually add, is that in shot? Gradually add some of these bits of uh, rehydrating porcini. I would just tip the whole thing in, but um, it can be a bit gritty on the bottom. Not that I have any way of straining any of this. So pour a bit of that in, but it's going to be easy. I don't really want to let any sediment get into there. Get that good old mix around. Can we declare what's left there as sediment we don't want? Sorry if that was actually flavour. What do you reckon? Should I put the lid on at this point? Stick the lid on. The third BCB block has gone on. I just, I let it just sit for a while in between. Got a bit of a stir. Uh, but this is all I brought with me. So, um, um, well, I don't know. I mean, that's starting to look sort of like risotto, isn't it? So I think, um, let this one burn through and again maybe let it sit for a while i think this will probably be okay see how that's getting on yeah i mean it looks a bit like risotto try a bit oh terrible terrible camera work terrible lighting hmm you know what, I think that rice is actually cooked and it's not on the sort of, um, you probably can't see that can you? Mm. It's not at that kind of absolute, kind of uh, borderline, very al dente, which you know is alright for risotto. I would actually say the texture of that is perfect. Just has a little bit of the texture of the rice left, but it's definitely not hard in the middle. Mmm. Well, I mean that was a bit a bit touch and go there. But I actually think that might be a resounding success. So um plonk over there for a moment. But then the finishing touch is usually a bit of parmesan. So instead of the uh, the classic parmesan, you should add to a risotto. They have uh, a cheese I like to call um, Cedari di Somersetti. You might have had that cheese before, um, but it will work. It will add creaminess, bit of salt, bit of umami, and that will be delicious. I'm going to turn the camera off while I mix that round because I'm running out of hands. This is the finished product. Burning my hand on the billy there. Um, I'll um, I'll pick you up, point you inside. <laughs> oh, crikey, what a spectacularly awful bit of camera work! But um, hopefully you got a brief glimpse of what probably looks like brown, indiscriminate slop to you. But um, I'm actually pretty pleased with that. Um, it's creamy. Hmm. Full of umami. Mmm. 
warming, um, lovely texture on the rice. Um, I, I'm, I'm by, I don't think it's skill, I think it's just pure luck. I've somehow happened on that beautiful sort of, it's definitely soft on the outside, tiny bit of texture on the inside. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, the Chevrolet Chambertin in the end in here. I was slightly panicked while it was cooking, worried that it wasn't absorbing enough water and it would end up hard. So I sloshed a lot of the old um, Jev Sham in there. And I think I've created something quite beautiful actually. Um, Gevray Chambertin and Porcini Risotto. In a hedge. Cheers. I am going to get on and eat the bloody thing, but um, just look at that ensemble. Oh, crikey, you can't see the label in this um, terrible lighting. Where else on YouTube do you get Porcini Risotto, Gevray Chambertin, bloke in a tweed suit, in a bloody hedge. The mist has come in a bit now. I'm not sure if that's uh, coming out on the camera. Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, there's a fine, fine mist. That's the uh, the damage this time. Not too bad. I mean, it, um, not as bad as the uh, the macaroni cheese I did the other day. I uh, spent a while messing about trying to create some sort of awning. Bit of paracord there. Well, should we test that out? Uh, is that does that just about provide enough room to sit up? Um, got the good old sit mat there. Um, but, um, I mean, you know, after a fashion, sort of yes, my head is touching the uh, top of the awning. I'm not sure if that's generally a desirable thing, but uh, that sort of works. Well, we are down to the last dribble of. Chevrolet Chambertin, uh, I, that, that, that was pretty good, I enjoyed that. Uh, it is delightful to be back here in uh, in this, uh, my one of my favourite hedges, uh, different though it is this time of year. It is um, amazingly quarter to ten, I think, which is, uh, that's a fairly respectable time to start thinking about going to bed when uh, sleeping uh, out in the wild. Okay, well, um, that is... Uh, that's it for this evening. Um, uh, <laughs> Cracky, that light. Horrible. Um, I'm in the ridiculously small tent, which I'm actually finding very warm, cosy and dry this evening. I know no one out there is a fan of it, but uh, it fits in this ridiculously small space I have in the hedge here. So um, I'm happy with it on this occasion, and it was easy compared to faffing around with tarps and whatever. Anyway, um, I will get back to you in the morning. I will probably head over to Avebury to watch whatever there is to see of the sunrise. I doubt it's going to be very impressive, but uh, I will head there regardless. Go and look at the gloomy, probably grey skies. Um, so, good night, and I will see you. It is uh, something like ten past seven. I keep re-recording this bit because the battery's running out. Um, getting on for quarter past seven. Um, so there's just under an hour until sunrise. Um, it wasn't a great night's sleep. I just sort of just couldn't seem to get comfortable. The, um, the quilt was nice and warm. Somehow I felt a little bit cold from underneath. I'm not sure quite what was going on there. Perhaps I needed another, um, perhaps I needed another layer, um, rather than just wearing a shirt. But, um, um, yeah, not too bad. Um, so I suppose I've got to get all this wet kit packed up and back in the bag and um, hot foot it to uh, back into Avebury if I want to see the uh, sunrise but I don't really think there's going to be much to show for it. Well uh, much against my will I managed to uh, extract myself from my sleeping bag nice and warm though that is. It is raining a bit it's not very nice outside uh, but that was um, that was home for the night it's looking a bit of a mess now. That's um, not as you know, neat as it should be, but um, anyway, um, this is, uh, here we are, my favourite hedge. Well, that wasn't a fun job, but uh, there we go. Everything, all the tat, wet tat, back in the bag. Hashtag, leave no trace. Well, goodbye, delightful hedge. Until the next time, thank you very much. Oh, I don't need the light anymore. It's good.
that probably also means I'm on the brink of missing the uh, sunrise as it again not that there's going to be much to actually see of it probably look a mess uh, but uh, here I am walking down the uh, green street or here path uh, I think I have about 11 minutes to go until sunrise I should probably pay attention to this that's going to be slippy um, lovely chalky track well uh, I think it is now the moment of sunrise and I'm still not quite in Avebury I'm just about to pass that um, it's called Manor Farm the very muddy farm on one edge um, of Avebury I can just about hear some chanting off in the distance perhaps that's just my uh, ears playing tricks on me perhaps there's a cows mooing at the farm happy solstice everyone anyway um, <laughs> even I am just walking along a muddy track well about 10 minutes late not that uh, would have made much difference because uh, you know very grey but uh, again happy solstice everyone it all gets better from here in terms of daylight hours at least look at the gloom well uh, unless anything else mystical and wonderful happens seems unlikely on this grey drizzly what is it Thursday morning Wednesday morning I've lost track um, I will say goodbye there so thank you very much for watching happy solstice um, probably won't get another video out before Christmas so Merry Christmas as well um, and Happy New Year even and uh, uh, not quite sure when the next one's coming but uh, we'll see you on the next one bye